<laughs> putting Colorado on a trajectory to become a spaceport. The state's governor, John Hickenlooper, signs a bill with enticements for companies to operate commercial space flights from Denver. And that's going to take maybe 15 years for us to get there, where we actually got vehicles that are going to take people in a suborbital flight around uh, halfway around the world. And, but uh, what we're standing up is basically a new industry, and that's kind of melding aviation with aerospace. Colorado will compete with seven other spaceports licensed so far, like this one in New Mexico, to launch tourists to the edge of space on plane-like aircraft. Virgin Galactic, which is among a handful of U.S. companies vying for a slice of the space tourism market, expects to carry its first paying passengers next year from New Mexico. 500 people have so far paid $200,000 each for tickets. But some space experts at this industry gathering in Colorado believe for spaceports to survive, the cost of taking private citizens into orbit needs to come down to Earth. Technically, it's certainly possible. Now, whether or not the market's there, you know, how much is a ticket going to cost to do that? And really, the biggest breakthrough that has to come out for any kind of this, uh, these things is a breakthrough in propulsion and making it less expensive. And American spaceports face competition from Russia. For the super-rich, U.S. firm Space Adventures sell seats on board the Soyuz spacecraft for $50 million each, destined for the International Space Station. Within the next 10 years, there will be literally thousands of people going to space every year. And so it's certainly not millions, like in civil aviation, but it's a heck of a good start. The U.S. government predicts travel from private spaceports could be a billion-dollar industry within the next decade, as more companies express an interest in helping tourists reach for the stars.